Good morning. My name is Mark Welsh. I'm the pastor here at Polk Street United Methodist Church. I'm so honored that you chose to worship with us. It's my prayer and all of our prayer that you would connect with God in a special way as together we worship the Lord in music, in word, and in deed. So I pray God's blessings on you this morning as together we lift up the name of our Lord. It's a great Monday. It was cool this morning. The breeze was blowing, and it, it, it's a great Monday to be together. And so I would like to share with you some of the exciting events that are going to be coming up on uh, Wednesday and Sunday. First of all, I'd like to remind you, uh, next Sunday we will be continuing the series, The Blessings, and that is going to be The Blessing of Music. It will have wonderful music in the during the service and an exciting uh, Sunday evening of music, which tell us about Cub. So we do have some music this Sunday evening. We have an opportunity for some fun and fellowship with a little bit of social distancing on Sunday night, September 6th at 6.30 to dark. And the Monarch Band is going to be playing live music for all ages. Uh, this is going to be a fun event. You can come to the north parking lot over here by the Great Hall and you can tailgate, bring snacks, food, whatever you'd like for your family. Come and listen to the band, visit with our fellow church members, and just have a good time on the Polk Street lawn. Hopefully it'll be a cool, yeah. beautiful evening. Yeah, yeah. So. sounds really exciting. I hope all of you will put that on your calendar to come. Also, I want to remind you that this Wednesday evening, September 2nd at 6.30, we will begin a new series of the live Bible study series. We're going to be doing one called Promises, 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 and we will be looking at the five covenants in the Old Testament that God made with us and humans. And so we invite you to be a part of that, share with your friends, uh, invite others that maybe haven't found us yet on Facebook or YouTube, make a watch party. Let us have a good time on Wednesday evening. I'm looking forward to all these exciting things this week. Thank you, Polk Street. And we will see you Wednesday evening live right here on Facebook as well as our YouTube channel. So we're very excited to be bringing more online content and ministries to everyone. So please help support it and uh, share it with friends and family members. Comment on it. Like it. We really appreciate your support. Bye, everybody. Every day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
a joy it is to worship the Lord with you here at Polk Street. Please be seated. This Sunday is a very special Sunday. We have our back to school Sunday. I know many children have brought their backpacks. Many are spread apart in our congregation, which is very healthy. And if you're at home or you're worshiping with us online, I'll encourage you now to please stand up. We have a, a wonderful list of teachers and students here that are in our sanctuary and at home. So if you're a teacher or a student, I'm going to ask you to stand. Please stand up. If you're at home, please stand. We're going to pray for you as a congregation, as some of our staff will lead this liturgy, and then we'll say a prayer for you. You need to know that we love you. We're praying for you. We're praying for a big year. I know this is a year filled with anxiety as some students started a couple weeks ago. Some students started last week, and some students will start on Tuesday. We're praying for you. So now, together as a congregation, let us bless our students and our teachers. God of all knowledge and wisdom, bless these students and teachers and all the devices they will use every day of this school year. As students and teachers use their devices, may they be reminded of your love and your care that surrounds them every day. Help them to do their best. Guide them to make right choices and remind them that your love and presence are always with them. Fill them with curiosity, understanding, respect for their leaders and care and compassion for students. In your love and mercy, surround our students, our teachers, and our schools with your protection, that they may be safe places for all who enter. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. When it's the night before school and I'm picking out all my clothes and making sure I have all my school supplies. Jesus is with me. When I'm waking up and eating a healthy breakfast to start the day. Jesus is with me. When I'm getting on the school bus, going to school, or opening my device to, be to begin my school day. Jesus is with me. When I meet my teachers and new friends in my class. Jesus is with me. When I'm playing with my friends at recess or running around in the yard at home. Jesus is with me. When I'm finding the right school bus to ride home or ending my school day on my device. Jesus is with me. When I'm telling my family about my day at school. Jesus is with me. So, so we pray for all of our students and all of our teachers, those who are going back and those who are back. We pray for the backpacks. If you have your backpack, please lift it up real quick. We acknowledge those wonderful backpacks. As you wear those, remember that you wear Christ, that God is protecting you and blessing you. Let's say a prayer real quick. Lord, thank you for our teachers and thank you for our students. We pray for every single family, both in this sanctuary and those who are worshiping with us online or on TV. We pray that you would protect them, guide them, and bless them, that they might learn and grow in you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people said, Amen. let's praise the Lord for our teachers and students. said in Luke 6 27 but I tell you who hear me love your enemies do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you pray for those who mistreat you in addition to the prayers listed in your bulletin we also want to lift in Christian sympathy Betty Johnson on the death of her son Mike Wright also those that are in the hospital 
Harold Ham and Hallie Ham, and I don't think those two are related, by the way. Let us pray. Lord God of all creation, the maker of all that exists and the author of everlasting life, we humbly approach you with our acts of worship and thanksgiving in our hearts. You alone are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, God, for the gift of forgiveness and eternal life we find only in your Son, Jesus. We thank you for your care and concern for us and the many hardships taking place in the world around us. We pray for those facing disease, injury, and illness. We pray for the victims of the recent hurricane on the Louisiana and Texas coastlands, for those suffering from the fires in California. You are the God of all comfort and compassion. We pray for you to empower your people called disciples of Jesus, to be vessels of your grace and love to many who are undergoing these hardships. Help us in our own spheres of influence to share the gospel in a tangible way, both in word and in deed. We also pray this morning for the military serving throughout the world, our law enforcement officers, healthcare workers, teachers, and others who dedicate their lives to making this world a better and safer place to live. Help us all to be more like Jesus, to receive the spoken word into our hearts as Pastor Mark delivers your message of the day. Now, God, with one voice, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture reading comes from Numbers 6, 22 through 27. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. This is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. Please be seated. A mother was driving her daughter to school for the first day. The little girl was really nervous. So the mom simply said a prayer for her at a stoplight, you know, with her eyes open and everything, you know. But put out her hand and just prayed God's blessings over her daughter. That God would fill her with, her, with God's spirit, that God would fill her with God's power, and that she might have a great day. As she dropped off her daughter at school, after she put on her mask and everything, got her lunch, got her backpack, the mom was driving. She was going to go teach herself. And as she parked, was about to get out of the car, she got nervous. She said, oh, no, all these students are going to be here. Here we go. And she prayed, God, please bless me this school year. The blessing of God is really a, a mystery. I mean, the, the eternal God that's infinite comes down and, and blesses us, cares about our lives, protects us, guides us. This huge God intervenes in our normal discourse of life, our normal daily life with care, with protection, with enlightenment, with, with blessings. Well, yes. And the priest was called to give this blessing to God's people. In fact, God summoned Aaron and the priests to come and, and raise their hands and give the blessing to the people. So number six, 24 to 26, is one of the most famous blessings but also one of the most famous blessings within the Bible, not only of all time, but in the Bible. So, number six, 24 to 26, really captures the idea that our needs are met in God's blessing. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Basically, God has us in the, in the palm of his hands. God's taking care of us. God is watching us. God wants to bless us by keeping us, by being with us, by shedding light on our darkness, giving clarity and purpose and meaning, but also grace, that graciousness that a holy God gives to mere mortals that beautiful picture of God's presence when he, he looks at us. He looks at us and shows us what it's like to be in God's peace. So our needs are met in him. Every need that we could possibly have. And that priest that gave the blessing is really God's representative. So the priest kind of had a, a pretty gross job, to tell you the truth. Maybe this could be a good Netflix binge watching, like if they made one like this. But he would get animals and literally slaughter them in order to lift up their hearts to God to atone for the sins. So if you notice, we don't have like a little altar anymore where we would get birds or cattle. 
or anything like that and slaughter them because in these days, in Numbers 5, they would make vows to God and they would slaughter the animals and blood would atone for that sacrifice for their sins. But it only lasts for a little bit. They'd have to do it annually all the time. And only the priest could go into the Holy of Holies where they would sacrifice. And he would have to sacrifice for the people, but also sacrifice for himself. If he had any sins that maybe he forgot or maybe didn't, didn't name He had to make sure and atone for them to go into the Holy of Holies because God was that holy. God is that holy. The the priest couldn't be around God because if he did, he would be struck down dead because sin can't be around God. But then Jesus came as the ultimate priest, not to sacrifice animals, but to give himself in place of the sacrificial animals on the cross. That is why on this altar, in the center of the altar, we have the cross. We don't sacrifice animals. The ultimate sacrifice has been given for us, and that is in the cross where he sacrificed his life for us for now and forever. Hebrews 10, 11 to 12 says, day after day, the priest stands and performs his religious duties. Just like in Numbers 5 where they slaughtered the animals and they they would have their religious duties. Again and again he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. It does for a little bit, but not forever. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. That Jesus was our ultimate priest He was the ultimate sacrifice, not sacrificing animals, but giving of himself for all times, in all places, for all people, whether we're up or down, whether going through good times or hard times, old or young, not just in church, but anywhere, anytime. That God is accessible through simply a relationship with him. That he broke down those barriers. In 1517, in Wittenberg, Germany, Martin Luther was sharing with the people that God is available to anyone, anytime. You don't have to go to a certain place. You don't have to go to a certain person. All you have to do is pray to God, and right now, you can know God. So on October 31st, He got his 95 thesis, his 95 rebuttals to the issues of the church. And he nailed it to the door at the All Saints Church. And this started the Protestant Reformation. That God is available to anyone, anytime. You can't buy it. You can't pay for it. You can't earn it. You simply receive it. And that is the blessing of God. At the barriers coming to God are torn down. And Jesus wants all to come to him. But it's not just for you. It's not just for me. It's for all of us. Matthew 18, 20 says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus says, there am I with them. It's for me. It's for us individually where we put on Christ just like we put on our clothes. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that if If anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. And we can put on that name of Jesus. And that name of Jesus brings identity, purpose, and meaning. That that blessing is in Jesus' name. That Jesus guides us, blesses us because of this ultimate sacrifice. But it's not only for us as individuals. It's also for us as the people of God, as a community. It's a communal putting on of God in our lives. See, in Numbers 6.27, the priest was saying this blessing, putting his hands out and saying the blessing over them so that they might put on God's name. That then they were part of God. And that's the power of that name. That as God's people, we are under God's name. We still have our individual identities. 
We still have our individual names. But now we're a people. And we're God's people. Not alone. We belong. You have a tribe. You have a community in Christ. There's a brotherhood and sisterhood that runs deeper than blood. It's because of the blood of Christ that covers all of our sins. And that's why we have that blessing in Christ. And we're blessed to be a blessing. For we are empowered to be God's people. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Claiming the name, the blessing is available for you and for me. See, when Jesus died on that cross, something happened once and for all. Matthew 27, 51 says that the, the temple curtain that divided the Holy of Holies and the regular folk like you and me, they aren't priests, right? All of a sudden, that, that temple curtain was torn in two. Now, just, not just the Holy of Holy priests, not just the, the people who maybe are born into it can come to God. Anyone can come to God and receive that blessing because Jesus was our high priest and he gave the ultimate sacrifice. And this tore down all barriers once and for all. But this is the whole idea that we're getting to. It's not exclusive for priests. And God is not in a building anymore. God is in our hearts, my friends. Whether you are at home, you're worshiping with us online, whether you're in the hospital, whether you are in this sanctuary, it doesn't matter really where you are, although this is a holy place. I look around and I see so many people who have had lives changed here in our sanctuary. Many people have said goodbye to loved ones, welcomed beautiful families, baptisms, confirmations. Polk Street has a rich heritage, a beautiful history. But God isn't in a building. God is where you are. If we'll simply lift up our hearts because Jesus did this for us, because there's power in Jesus' name, that at the name of Jesus, everyone will bow and everyone will confess that Jesus is Lord, Philippians 2.10 says. So, so one more time, God is not in a place. God is in our hearts. And this is called the priesthood of all believers. You're a priest. Look around. You're a priest. Sometimes we don't feel like priests. Sometimes we think, oh, me a priest? Claim the name. You are a priest because you're a believer. Receive that blessing. Be a blessing. And then as a priest, give the blessing. You know, these are scary days. Days filled with anxiety. So many issues seem to be at hand. But that little girl, she went to school. And as she went to school, she sat in her classroom. And she looked over and there was a girl there she didn't really recognize, couldn't really see who all the other kids were because they're masks. But she kind of recognized her, but maybe she didn't. Then the girl sneezed. The whole class froze. And that other girl was so embarrassed. And the girl that had been dropped off from her mom looked at the girl who sneezed and said, God bless you. 
And this girl who sneezed totally changed. She said, why, well, well, thank you. At lunch, they saw each other. They sat down and they started talking. This other girl, who the girl who had been dropped off, met, had just moved there from California, didn't know anyone, was so nervous. So they started talking about school, about life. Then after school, as they were waiting for their mom to pick them up, they stood in line together, you know, six feet apart, but they stood in line together. And they chatted and they talked. And then she said, hey, can, can I have your, your phone number, California girl? I'll text you later. The little California girl's face lit up. She couldn't really see because, you know, the mask. And she said, you know, I, I thought today was going to be the worst day of my life. But because of you, it's one of the best days. Thanks. And she said bye, and she got into her mom's car. The other girl just waited for her mom, and finally her mom picked her up. And as she got in the car, her mom, the teacher, said, how was your day? She said, it was good. How was yours? The mom, who'd been teaching for years, said, it was a tough day. We've had the longest spring break ever. And it's hard to round the kids back up. They were so wild, but I feel called to this. And it's good to be back in work. She said, it was tough, but I'm blessed. Whether you're a teacher, whether you're a student, whether you're a business person, retired, whatever you do, receive the blessing that God has for us, the blessing of light, of love, of grace, of peace, of God's protection. Be the blessing that God has called us to be by being God's people, by claiming that name. And then, my friends, as the priesthood of all believers, give that blessing to others. At the supermarket, at the school, at church, in your business, Wherever, however, anytime, anywhere. Me, you, and us. May we be the blessing and give the blessing because we've received the blessing. Because we've claimed, because we've claimed the name. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that even people like us are welcome here in your presence, whether we are worshiping online or in this sanctuary. Lord, you are with us. Forever two or three are gathered in your name. You're with us. So we claim that promise. We claim that blessing in our lives. Lord, thank you for your presence. May we receive that blessing that whatever comes up, good days or rough days, May we lean on that blessing that you have for us, that protection. And Lord, may we, be a ple- may we be a blessing to others and pass it on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, together as God's people, let's stand and sing our very last song, Pass It On.
has been so good to see you this morning. It is such a blessing to have you here in the sanctuary and to worship with you online. And I want to say next Sunday we will be blessed by our wonderful choir. It's Music Sunday, and it will celebrate the blessing of music. And so we're looking forward to that and also looking forward to communion. Again, we will be serving communion in individual packets so that we maintain social distancing. We we'll make sure that everyone is safe. So you'll receive your, your communion elements. You'll take them off and you'll, together we'll eat the bread. No one else will touch it but you. And we'll drink the, the wine or the grape juice. But only you will touch it. So we'll want to make sure that everyone is safe and that everyone can worship the Lord as comfortable as we can possibly be. But as we close the day, I want to remind you that you are a priest. That you can give a blessing because you have received that blessing. So this is how we're going to do it. I want you to put out one hand. And just maybe even want to wave it around. But we're going to bless each other this Sunday. So together, let us read the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And all of God's people said...
Mike Jones, the business administrator here at the church. And I'm sitting in the Jones view, or at least that's the way my family thought of it for all those years. My brother, sister, and I were expected to be here each Sunday, 1055 sharp. Well, there was that one time when I was in the fifth grade. Kevin Deckard and I decided to be rebels. We sat in the balcony. That only happened once, as far as I can remember. The sanctuary that you are sitting in today is full of secrets. Behind these walls hold all kinds of different stories. I've asked Leonard Estep, our building superintendent, and Cub Cooker, our media expert, to take you behind the scenes and see what happens. This is off to the boilers, the water uh, pumps are circulated all over heating, cooling water. It's also electrical distribution that comes in here. It's actually the blower that puts the air to it. To the organ. Yeah, it's okay. just an air pump, what they call it. It's, it's turned off right now, but Noah Paul can fix it off and on with the switch at the organ console. When you're in the sanctuary and you're looking, you know, towards the choir loft and all that, if you look above it, all of that uh, grill work and the grill cloth, that's actually the organ loft. That's where the organ pop star is behind that grill work. I forget the numbers, but there's, there's a certain number of pipes in what they call the rank. I don't know if it's 13 or 17 or something, and now I think we have 72 different ranks in the whole system. We also have losers, you see the, there's like a damper up there. Those are called swells, and they actually control how much noise is allowed out of the air in here to the room. Yeah, it's big. And the bigger pipes at the far end of there's some really tall ones over there. We're gonna go into a space where we have a large air handler that services heating and air to the sanctuary. It's located below the balcony seating up here. We believe in the mid 50s is when uh, air conditioning was added to the sanctuary. It was a monumental task to add to the sanctuary. So where we're standing now is above the narthex, large unit provides air into the sanctuary. One of our dilemmas in, uh, in this older building, especially the sanctuary, is uh, we can only heat or cool by circulating water. So we can either circulate hot water and give you heating, or we can circulate cold water and give you cooling. We literally have to switch heating to cooling water depending on conditions in the room, conditions in the rest of the building. Sunday mornings, of course, this is the most important room. I wanna make these people happy. But sometimes when I make these people happy, I'm making Sunday school classes too cold or too hot. This area is simply the attic above the sanctuary. This is how we access some of our lighting, you know, just the room, the, the seating lighting up there. We have a couple air handlers for the HVAC equipment. But those chandelier lights in there, they're actually on cables. And we have winches up here. We have to be cranked down by hand to get to where we can reach them downstairs and replace the lamps in them. Anyway, this is where we're going. A little bit of climbing involved. Uh, We'll also see an old abandoned room that used to be part of the organ, the old organ. Uh, it was decided during the remodel of the organ to not have that section any longer, it wasn't needed. This is that section at the back of the room where the, uh, where the shepherd's seat is. And if, you, if you're up in the balcony level, you can see that the ceiling goes way higher back there. That's what this section is right here. There were pipes, organ pipes in here that ran off of the air pump in the original organ. But this is where some of the pipes were. It was just uh, determined that we didn't need them during the remodel of the organ, so it was abandoned. Way back in that corner is the TV booth. You have to little crawl over all this to get to it. 
this is an old speaker that we used to use. I think this has been abandoned. But below us here is the kind of a boxy looking arrangement with some grill cloth. The current speakers, not the current ones, the second generation speakers are down in there. We're probably right above the, the main area of the chancel here. I think the uh, pulpit probably is about right in this area right here. Right here? Yeah. This is the two air handlers that uh, we have connected to the outside so we can bring in outside air. And that actually gives us a lot of flexibility with being able to bring some cold air into the room to give us some cooling. If you walk down these steps and those set of steps, there's a trap door down there on that lowest level. And that's where we were a while ago in the organ loft. There was a vertical ladder on the wall there where we were standing. That's where that would come out is right there. Wow. It was completed in 1928. It's when they held our first services, I believe. I don't know exactly when they started, but uh, certainly in 1927 it was going on. So maybe in 26 they even started. You know, what we're above now is the ceiling to the sanctuary. That's pretty tall. Look how much further above us it is to the ridge of the roof. This is the attic space above the fourth floor area where the classrooms are. This is also the trail that takes us to the bell tower, which is where we're heading next. So. in the area where um, the speakers are and where the lights are. And that's where we have the bird screens to keep the pigeons out of that area. Okay, we're about halfway at the bell tower. This is the uh, location where we have the lighting that lights up the bell tower at night. This is also where we have the speaker system. And the only sound that these produce is what comes out of the carillon system. So we've got bells. This is the bell noise where it comes from. As you can well imagine, it takes a number of staff persons to get this place ready for each week's activities. Our campus is made up of three separate and distinct buildings and totals over 169,000 square feet. These are the buildings that host our youth and children, adults, choirs, and many community groups throughout the week. We are constantly preparing and acting on our ministries with our Polk Street family and our community. If these walls could talk, they would speak of 91 years of vibrant traditional worship, choral music from the sanctuary choir, youth and children, concerts and dramas, baptisms, wedding celebrations, and of course, celebrations of life and memorial services. All of these and more effectively changed lives for Christ in our Christian seasons. This is the mission of Polk Street Church and has been for over 130 years. Lives will continue to be changed as we move forward into 2020. Please prayerfully consider completing your estimate of giving card for 2020 and help our finance committee plan for our 2020 budget. Thank you for responding to God's call in your life and supporting the ministries of Polk Street United Methodist Church.